driving 30 minutes to and from work every day, I was miserable. I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing this for the rest of my life. I'm not going to wait and play when I'm 65 and retired. I'm going to play now and I can work at the same time. So what does that take? We are Gold Ivy. Our mission is to empower you to own and unleash your truth. Stories of resiliency are gold and ivy grows in hard places. Those hard places are what creates space for light to shine through. You decide what works for your daily life and how to transform our lessons into your gold. This is Ivy Unleashed, a Gold Ivy production. Welcome back to Ivy Unleashed. Today is a very special day. We are so excited to talk with our guest today because he is personally and professionally involved in Gold Ivy Health Co. And he creates a beautiful system for us to deliver this podcast to you. Our editor, Jeremy Stein, is joining us for Ivy Unleashed. Welcome to actually being within the podcast. <laughs> this is so cool. Thank you so much for having me. I get to step from behind the scenes and into the scenes, which is very exciting for me. I love it. Oh, it's so exciting too. And just a little background on how we even know Jeremy. So we had on Alan Stein Jr., his brother, uh, last August, oh, a year ago. A hot minute ago. Yeah, like a year ago. And I, at that time, was editing the podcast. And it's a lot. Like, it's a lot of work mm -hmm. to be in tune with technology and learn all the things and a lot of things can go wrong. And he's like, Hey, whenever you're ready, I've got this guy, he's my brother and he's amazing at what he does. And so we met Jeremy and Jeremy is just like, I work with Jeremy a lot more than Brooke. Brooke has other pieces of the business that she interacts with more. And Jeremy is just like the kindest, like most loving person. And he has his own podcast, main street magic and that's what we're going to talk about today because it is literally magical what he has created. And if you go to YouTube, you can see where he's sitting with all of his Disney, what do you call it? Disney memorabilia. I was going to say junk, but I like memorabilia. <laughs> <laughs> this man loves Disney and so does his wife, Rhonda. And yes. like Andrew said, they have an awesome podcast. They also visit Disney parks all of the time. Yes. They've really, both of them have created this passion into a business mm -hmm. and to hear how he did it yes. and get an inside look at Disney, some stories that maybe you don't know, some behind the scenes. Yes. We're super excited. Yeah. And Jeremy has 600 plus episodes. So like legit, if you need to know anything about Disney, this is your guy. But what we want to get into, Jeremy, is like we want to learn more about you selfishly from mm -hmm. us, but for everybody else too to know more about your life, you and Rhonda, and how this whole Disney extravaganza started. I mean, I'll go way back for both of us growing up just real quick. Rhonda was born and raised in Florida. And so she grew up going to Disney, you know, probably once a year or so, twice a year with her family. She was the type that has all of the old. Disney animated movies on VHS and those old plastic clamshell containers that her parents still hold on to. And I grew up in Maryland for the first 20 plus years of my life. And we went to Disney as a family, uh, maybe every three, four, five years, something like that. We'd get in the, the family station wagon, like straight out of a you know Christmas vacation. And uh, we would drive the 13, 14 hours down to Orlando and, you know, do a long weekend or something. And you know, going a couple times and most of those memories, I don't remember those trips. I just remember from the photographs that we have moving down to, to Florida because I met Rhonda, which is a really crazy and interesting story. So if you actually go back now to 2002, I was a very big uh, fan of the band Creed. Let me take you higher. I literally don't know who that is. <laughs> not to, not to age you both, but, uh, <laughs> But yeah, I was a huge fan. I went to over like 20 shows uh, all up in the Northeast. I met a lot of friends through the kind of online community, which in 2002, there isn't much, you know, mm -hmm. we had AOL Instant Messenger. Facebook wasn't out yet. I think we were just getting maybe into MySpace, you know, which was really like that first social platform. Creed and, and the record company set up an online bulletin board. That was kind of the old school Facebook group. You know, it'd be a bunch of fans would come in and somebody starts a topic and everybody responds to it. And so I met this couple that were dating from Florida, Brittany and Brian, and they lived in Jacksonville, Florida and met them online. 
And I was, I was working for the, for the first year or two of that coming out of Y2K. I was a computer technician. And so I was working at the University of Maryland Medical Center running their whole changeover to Y2K and all the computers. So I actually had a lot of free time and we would all chat on instant messenger. And so they were actually going to drive up to uh, New York one time. And, and Brittany was like, well, you know what, Brian and I'll stop by and like, let's meet in person. And this is during a time where you were specifically told, don't talk to strangers <laughs> on the internet and whatever you do, don't meet them in person. Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, we'll give that a shot. You know, what could go wrong? So they came and visited me uh, just outside of Baltimore for the weekend. Everything went well. And then if you fast forward now, about a year or two, now it's 2002, uh, my parents had retired to the Myrtle Beach area and I'd go down for Christmas and Brittany texted me and said, hey, do you want to come down the day after Christmas and, and hang out? You're like six hour drive. You can meet all of our friends. You know, we'll go out and have a good time. And, and at the same time, she's texting her best friend growing up, Rhonda, and telling her the same thing. Like, hey, do you work the day after Christmas? That guy, Jeremy, that I told you about, he's coming into town. We're all going to go out. Needless to say, we really hit it off that night. We all went out for dinner and drinks, and then we went to a karaoke bar uh, at Jacksonville Beach. And this was a time in my life where I was uh, had a roommate, and we both played guitar. He sang, and we were in Baltimore doing open mics almost every night of the week. Wow, I didn't know this. Did you sing Creed? No, we never did, because he was not a Creed fan. Uh, my friend Phil, he was not a Creed fan, so we never got to do those. But we just we started to get into the ball. To more music scene and community and, and all that type of stuff. And on off nights, so Phil had really long blonde hair, real shaggy, you know, smelled like patchouli. He was just this unassuming hippie who could have a real bad attitude at times, but also had this amazing voice that nobody expected to come out of him. So on off nights, we'd actually go do karaoke around Baltimore and just kind of blow people away when he'd get up there and sing like Stevie Wonder. Then I'd usually close off the night and I do like vanilla ice, ice, ice baby or something. Oh. Just, you know, it's late at night just to have fun. And so we go to this karaoke bar down here in Jacksonville Beach and Ron and I are hitting it off and all the other friends were having a good time and everybody starts to slowly like, we got to go home. I got to work tomorrow. You know, we're going to leave. We're going to leave. And Rhonda said, well, you know, I can, I can take you back to Brittany's. We want to hang out. The bar's not closing for another two hours. Let's just hang out. And so her and I are hanging out and the karaoke's winded down and we're just chatting and kind of getting to know each other. I look over in the corner and there's a older guy who's probably my age now, but this was 20 years ago. So I assumed he was older and he's just kind of staring at us and a little bit creepy. And I'm in a place I've never been. And I'm just like, oh, great. And I'm very unconfrontational. And he gets up and starts walking towards us. I'm like, great. Where is this going? And he just walked up and he looked at me and he said, I want to let you know you're here with the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Oh. And like without hesitation, I don't know what it was. I reacted and I said, thank you. That's why I married her. Oh. <laughs> and so this was over 20 years ago now. At that moment, had no idea that we would, I'd go back to Maryland. We'd keep in touch. Uh, we'd start dating long distance. And every other weekend we were flying back and forth from Jacksonville to Baltimore. Wow. Originally, she was actually going to move up to Baltimore. I had to get 10 years into my 401k to be able to be fully vested and pull it all out. And I thought you come up, live in Baltimore for a couple of years, and then we'll move down to Florida. Everything will be great. And she called me one night just in tears and said, I can't move to Florida. My family's here. My job's here. My clients are here. I just can't do it. And again, without hesitation, I said, okay, I'll move to Florida. And within about six months, I packed up everything I owned. And left a life that I had been, you know, living for over 20 years to go down and, and move to be with someone that we had only spent, I think the most consecutive days we had spent together was like four. Wow. So it was really like, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Obviously it worked out. <laughs> so progressed and, and we got married uh, within about a year of me moving down, wow. had our, our first daughter, Kaylin, within about another year, two and a half years later, we had Lacey and then it was 2015 that we had been going to Disney about once or twice a year, just with like Florida resident deals. You know, I, I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed more once we had the girls and we took them and you really get to go at that age. You're experiencing Disney through the eyes of an 18 month old is so different when you're experiencing it, you know, a couple years earlier mm -hmm. in your mid twenties, just you and your girlfriend or your wife at the time. And so there's, I saw this whole other level and we went down for a concert uh, in 2015 and we stayed on property and I just, I just fell in love with like the resorts and everything. And so we became annual pass holders. 
I don't usually do anything like not at a hundred percent. And so I said, if we're going to be pass holders, I want to make sure we get our money's worth. And so we just started going every month. Well, once we went six months in a row and then we went 12, I'm like, okay, well now this is like a streak. Like we can't break that streak. So we've visited Walt Disney World every single month consecutively since December of 2015. Wow. Wow. (laughs) It's almost eight full years. Yeah. And the the crazy part, even in uh, April of 2020, when the entire world was shut down due to COVID and Disney parks were closed, starting with our 10th anniversary, we always went to Disney, just Rhonda and I without the kids on our anniversary. April 22nd, 2020, got in the car, we packed a lunch and her and I drove to Orlando. And we just drove around Disney property wherever it wasn't shut off. And I mean, it was like watching an apocalyptic movie. Like it was nuts. And we drove behind the castle. You could see it in Magic Kingdom. And we ate a little packed lunch and we drove home. But it was like, we went. Still counts. Yeah. So after just going so often, it was one of those things, you know, I'm I'm sure that you get it all the time with, with health and fitness. People start going, oh, you do a lot of health and fitness? Well, let me ask you tons of questions about it. People are going to ask us anyway, what are the best restaurants? What are the tips? What are the tricks? What are the resorts? I had been producing podcasts for about six or seven years at that point uh, with my brother, Alan, and some other folks. And I was like, I know how to do a podcast. I've never been on one, but let's do it. And so me and a buddy started Main Street Magic. A couple months in, he does financial sales and travels a lot. It was getting harder and harder for him and I to get together. One day, Rhonda was like, so what's your guy's episode on this week? And I said, we're not going to have one. You know, we're 30 episodes in. We barely had anybody listening. I was like, we're not going to have one. You know, we're we're too busy for that. And she's like, you can't be. You have people that want to hear you. I'll fill in. I'm like, okay. And then eventually it was just Rhonda and I, and we've, her and I now have done over 500 episodes. 600. Just celebrated 600. That was kind of the birth of it. And the initial goal was we already have this knowledge. Let's see what we can do with it. If in the end, it's something that makes money or we are able to write off certain portions of our Disney trips because it is a business, that's cool. But if we can help people have a better vacation, have a better trip, that's always our number one goal. And we just feel like everything else will will fall in place. I mean, there's nothing better. And again, I'm sure you guys know as you watch people transform their lives, based on information that you provide them. When somebody comes back to you and says like, we had the best trip because we listened to this and this episode, or boy, you saved us a lot of money. Like there's just nothing, there's nothing better than that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the coolest thing ever. And whatever comes after that, we're fine with. If that's all that ever comes of it is getting real cool emails every once in a while. That's okay too. But as long as we keep that, our focus and our number one goal, then we just feel like this is a success. Yeah. You're helping people. I mean, it can be a really overwhelming thing. I mean, there's so much involved with the Disney parks. Mm -hmm. Where do you even start? Like I know certain people have had terrible experiences because they went in blind and didn't know what they were doing. And you want to create this magical experience, but it requires some logistics and planning. And some Mm -hmm. people just like hate that stuff. I happen to be married into a family that loves that stuff. So I've had the best time there. And you had Jeremy. And I had Jeremy. So before Jeremy... I wish I would have known about Jeremy before the first times we went, but it was like the fast passes and like how to work the system. And luckily I'm married to an engineer and his family's engineers and they're all about efficiency. And so when I've had friends or family members go and they're like, oh, we went on like two rides. It was hot. I'm like, oh, that's so sad because it takes so much to get there. And like, I think for me, it's so much about creating memories, right? Creating these experiences for people and before I even went this last time, I was like, oh, Jeremy says this restaurant's good. Like this is a spot no one really knows or him and Rhonda went here and this is what they liked or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's nice to have that in your back pocket big time. It's work to go on a trip. And I know it shouldn't seem that way, but it, it's interesting because I think people, people are so excited when, or so disappointed, I should say, I mean, when they get there. And they realized they didn't do any research. I don't know how everybody else is, but like, I'm not going to go to just say the beach or a new city and then not at least do something like research wise. You know, you're at least maybe going to look on Yelp and find the best restaurants or you're going to figure out what area your hotel's in and maybe some things that there are to do around there. 
So when people go into blind, you know, blindly to something like Disney, they're going to always come out disappointed and we just don't want that. And maybe they don't find our podcast and they never listen to it, but we have a Facebook community. We have a social media community. Not all those people are listeners. We still try to put out information there. And just, even if you don't come to us, like just do your research because it's going to make or break your entire trip. And it's not cheap. I mean, the last thing you want to do is waste several thousands of dollars because you didn't spend a little bit of time just trying to learn and, and do some research. So that, that's one thing that we're just going to recommend. Again, whether you get it from us or you get it from somewhere else, just do your research before you go on an expensive trip like this. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Every episode of Ivy Unleashed is dedicated to empowering you to take ownership of your health. And what it really comes down to is prioritizing your mental health. We've both seen the beauty and growth that therapy can bring and are thrilled to partner with BetterHelp to allow you the opportunity to feel heard and seen by a professional. The National Alliance on Mental Health reports that 155 million people live in a designated mental health professional shortage area, and BetterHelp is working to close that gap. I've personally used BetterHelp and loved it because it was all online, making it super convenient. The biggest piece for me was how affordable it is. I was able to choose the therapist that met my needs. I came in with wanting to work on childhood trauma and anxiety, and it was unbelievable to see how many options I had with all the different backgrounds of therapists. With BetterHelp, you have access to a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness. And sometimes we can't see our own patterns and behaviors until we talk them out and get an unbiased perspective. It's really nice to have someone who doesn't know you and has the professional background to help you thrive in your daily life. It has made the world of a difference with every relationship in my life, including the one with myself. To get started, all you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire about your needs and preferences and choose your therapist out of the options they give you. You can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. Also, you can switch therapists at no additional charge until you find the right fit for you. The best investment you can make is in yourself. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash gold ivy. That's betterhelp.com slash gold ivy. Take the first step to inner peace and freedom today. Brooke, what do you think everyone wants more of? Energy. What do you think most people are hoping to come out of 2023 with? Mm, Feel more confident, be an example for others, actually have the self-discipline to take care of themselves. Yes, exactly. Because we hear the need for it and we want to help you get in the best shape of your life, we created Move with Gold Ivy, our virtual workout platform. Our dream has been to create accessible, affordable, and effective workouts that you can do anytime, anywhere designed to hold you accountable and get you the results you need. You can pick any workout you want at any time, but if you do want a plan that alternates muscle groups and leaves your body feeling energized and strong, we have a weekly plan that you can follow to take the guesswork out. It's easy to navigate and packed with all kinds of workouts that will help you strengthen, trim, pump up, tone, energize, de-stress, all of the things we want our body to feel. It's within MOVE. Don't forget to mention the resources we offer. As a member of Move with Gold Ivy, you'll be a part of our exclusive Ivy League community where we share our top wellness resources on things like meal planning, gut health hacks, time management, and more. And because you listen to the Ivy Unleashed podcast, we want to offer you all of this for only $20 a month, cheaper than any monthly membership you'll find. Not only that, you'll get a free trial week to test it out. And if you need more incentive to start prioritizing you, here's our favorite part. Your movement matters. Each month, 10% of your membership will be donated to support the mental health of those in need. So head on over to goldivyhealthcode.com slash move or find the link within the show notes of this episode and sign up today. Stop putting yourself in the back burner. Snag your spot and reap the benefits that you deserve to feel this year. It's your time. Move for your health, move for your confidence, move for your mental clarity, move with Gold Ivy. And now back to the show. Where do you recommend people start? Right? You've got over 600 episodes now. Mm-hmm. So someone comes to you and is like, I want to create this magical experience. 
what do you say? What's that first step? Honestly, number one, and and this is not a sales pitch. Again, you can use the travel agents that we have, or you can use another one. If you've got you know a friend down the street that's a travel agent, go for it. Number one is use a travel agent because they're going to help you navigate everything very quickly from the start of where do you book, you know, whether you're on property or off property, what the pricing looks like. As an annual pass holder and a Florida resident, I can sometimes go look at a price online and there's four or five different offers for the same room. And there could be a huge savings, you know, that I'm missing out on if I'm not looking at the right thing. So the travel agent is going to set all that up. And even if you're somebody that loves to to plan and you want to do the research yourself, go for it. You can then hand that off to them and just say, book this for me and you're supporting a small business because that's what all these travel agents are. They're small business. You know, why not help them get a little bit of commission even if you did, you know, some of the legwork. Second, because we do have so many episodes and they can be hard to navigate. My inbox, my DMs are always open. I have a running spreadsheet with every single episode. Uh, the way my brain works, normally you can say, hey, have you ever eaten at this restaurant? And I can probably quickly find you know, that episode through searching or I'll just remember, oh yeah, we ate there in December of 2021 because this happened. <laughs> and I can send that info and just say, hey, you know, listen to this episode or these handful of ones. We're kind of restarted right now a Disney prep series where about once every other week we're doing an episode on really going from pre-planning your trip to actually planning and booking it to once you get there. So everything from what do you pack on your Disney trip? We do lots of ones that are, that are very useful. And I think I'd sent you some is like ways to beat the heat. You know, if you're not used to central Florida and you're coming even in October and you think, oh yeah, let me pack my sweatshirts. No. <laughs> You're not going to need them. <laughs> There's a lot of those episodes that you can search for. Uh, they can sometimes be hard to find if you're just trying to search through iTunes. But again, people can always hit me up anytime on social or email or whatever, and I will gladly respond. That's one of the things I learned from my brother is making sure I respond to every inquiry, uh, no matter what it is, how big or small. And I usually try and do that within like 48 to 72 hours. So I will get back to you with any questions you have and you know, do everything we can to to help you on that trip. Yeah, I would start with Jeremy. But what we want to get into more is like the deeper meaning behind this. We want to know why Disney. We want to know what it brings to you. We want to know going once a month is a commitment. Like there's so many things we want to get into. But what is it about Disney? Like the people that are like, Disney is life, which you are one of them. What is it that's in you that like you want people to know that it creates this in you or like it creates this in your family experience? It's an escape. I mean, it's crazy because I, you know, I've, I've edited so many episodes for you guys now and I hear these stories that are just like, I mean, they're just, they're heartbreaking. And, and I listen to those and I think, boy, I mean, these are people that need an escape. And then I look at us and, and we're very fortunate in our lives. We're extremely blessed. You know, the fact that we get to go so often and, and we put in work, obviously, and, and Rhonda works her butt off as a hairdresser three days a week, 12 hours a day. And I work with my clients and, and doing things, but you still just want that getaway from everyday life sometimes. For us, there's just nothing more magical than getting it at Disney from the attractions to the shows, the food. I mean, we've met now lifelong friends, both that were either listeners of the podcast that we've connected to in the parks. And there's some of our best friends that we interact with every day now to cast members, you know, whose entire job is just to make your trip as magical as it can be. There's lots of other places to visit. We, you know, we've done the keys a lot of times in the summer and we've loved it down doing old key West and marathon key. And we're uh, universal Orlando pass holders as well. And we get down there about every other month. And we really enjoy it there. But there's something that just, I think, speaks to us from Disney on a whole other level that is able to even kind of, you know, transcend from just being there to being at home. You know, last night I sat with Lacey, our, our 13 year old, who, you know, now we've got 13 and almost 16 year old girls. They don't want anything to do with us. <laughs> you know, I mean, and, it, and it's understandable. They, they come home. I pick them up from school. I've got three minutes in the car because the school's pretty much across the street that I can ask how their day was. Uh, I drop them off in the morning and I try and talk to them. Other than that, they're in their rooms. They don't want to be around you. Rhonda got me this Lego set, a Disney Lego set, because I've really started enjoying building those for my birthday. And as soon as Lacey saw it, she was like, can I help you build that? Heck yes, you can. And so we sat last night for about an hour, did one or two of the bags. We built a Lego set. We spent time together. We put on a Disney movie. 
it's just kind of this this lifestyle for us. It makes us happy. Even if we're not in the parks, we're at home watching movies or listening to music, or I can look around this crazy office that I have with all this stuff. And most of the things in here I can look at and I can tie it to a very specific memory of, I, I remember when we picked up that thing, or I remember specifically this, this popcorn bucket behind me. Like I can tell you a very specific story from that. And that just makes me happy. It's an escape. It's somewhere that, yeah, you can kind of just go and truly be just magical. That That's kind of the overall thing. And it's one thing I do want to almost debunk a little bit is this whole Disney adult thing that gets a very bad rap. Oh, what's that? Well, I'll tell you now, it's very interesting for a place that's, you know, magical and, and, and all, there can be a very toxic community online around Disney. Very. Um, we've been lucky that our community has been built and we've, I don't know that we've ever had to block a person. We've almost never had to delete a comment. You know, we've been very lucky, but there's a lot that aren't that way. And there gets to be this stigma of these Disney adults that, you know, that Disney's only for families. It's only for kids. You know, why would Rhonda and I, two 44 year olds, you know, or been together for over 20 years now, want to go to Disney without kids? And there's, there is, there's this kind of like, these people might be crazy. And maybe we are a little bit. <laughs> It's just, it's something that we love and we enjoy and it brings us a lot of happiness. Again, whether it's in the parks or it's at home watching a movie, it's just, it's something that takes us out of our day-to-day -day life and gives us a release. It gives us an escape and we've just, yeah, we've absolutely fallen in love with the entire culture around it pretty much. Yeah. Well, what comes to mind, like as you're, everything you're saying, I keep thinking about, okay, it's connection with the people you love. Mm -hmm. It's time with the people that you love. It's play. It's play. And, you know, like you said, an escape, which, you know, as health coaches, we're like, oh, what are we escaping from? Maybe we but talk I about that. But I think it's a healthy escape, right? It's right. a break from the grind, from and the schedule. It's so innocent. Like, it's like, it's, you know, the world can be a scary place. Like, it can be, like, there's a lot of things going wrong in the world. And at Disney, there's nothing. <laughs> besides a few kids crying, but like that happens, but Mickey will fix it. You know, <laughs> So I, I keep thinking like, cause I am not, I love Disney when I go, but I'm not a person that's like, I can't wait to get back to Disney. Got a great time, but I like to go to other places. I don't mm -hmm. know, but that's what comes to mind for me is that it's like, it's fun, sweet, energetic, great music. Th then you're at home and then you have the movies with the good lessons for your kids. And then it's like you continually are creating these memories for your kids, whether it's at home or at the parks, of connecting and having these feel good, you know, whether it's something that's in your office that you can see in your home or the movie on or the music on. It's kind of like connecting back to what you guys do together to, to create a connection. It's like something you guys can always come back to. Like, this is our thing, which is really cool. And it's, it's yeah, it's that connection and it's the relationships. You know, there's been times that we've gone down and, you know, right off the top of my head, I can tell you, we've got friends in California, we've got friends in Boston, we've got them in Georgia, North Carolina, like all over the country that we've met. There's times that we go down there on a Friday, we come home on a Sunday, we don't ride a single attraction because we're meeting our friends there that are, you know, they're usually there for a longer period. So maybe they're there for a week and we come down for a few nights and we just hang out and we eat food and we have good drinks and we just enjoy an area that we can all go together and have something to do. You know, it'd be weird to say, Hey, why don't you just come hang out at our house for a weekend? All right. What are we going to do? <laughs> you know, there's and there you're, you're, they're all pass holders. So, you know, you got to pay for a hotel and, and your food and drink and stuff, but it's not, it's just different. You're not constantly going, we got to be doing something. We got to be doing something again. We, we lead a great life, but it's not without issues that you just want to get away from sometimes. And there's one ride there specifically, Flight of Passage in Animal Kingdom in the Pandora section. We've ridden it so many times now that I like to ride it and, and watch everybody else's faces. I don't even watch the screen anymore. This is the Avatar ride, right? You're, yeah, you're flying on the back of a Banshee. Yeah. The 3D, it's incredible. That's, it it's is the incredible. best ride ever. Yeah. And it's so immersive that you can look at somebody's face next to you and be like, I can tell they've never been on this. And they're smiling ear to ear. And you can tell. For at least that three and a half minutes, no matter what else is going on in their life, which we have no idea. We don't know if they're, they're having 
you know, health issues or financial issues, or for all we know, the week before somebody close to them passed away and, you know, the timing for this trip really wasn't the best, but they couldn't get a refund. So they came down. But for that three and a half minutes, you can watch their face and see that none of that matters. You know, again, even if that's you sitting on the beach somewhere reading a book and you know that for 30 minutes, you can just escape from everything that's going on in the world. You know, some you have control over a lot. You don't, and you can just get away from it. There's nothing like it. The same happens for me. I mean, I can, I get like teary eyed on that ride because everything else is gone. I don't care about the bills that we got to pay when we get home. I don't care that the girls are starting school next week or that I, you know, just lost a client or gained a client or any of that. It, it just, it doesn't matter for that moment in time. You're making those connections, you're building those relationships and you're having those memories. I, I think that's important for, for anyone. You know, we find it's very important for us when things get hard and for whatever reason they may be hard, it's just, it's somewhere we know we can go and at least just get a break for a little bit. And then we'll come back to reality and we'll jump back in and, and deal with it. You know, you need that time to get away, especially from a mental health thing. I mean, when you look at, you know, here's a place that we rely so heavily on visiting and it was closed for three, four months during COVID and we are all at home. We're, we're stuck at home. The things that brought us together, like I can actually go back to COVID and, and I'll tell you right now, I was one of the very mentally unstable people during the initial COVID push that just didn't know what was going on. I wanted to protect my family. So I was the one ordering groceries and sitting out front and wiping them down with, you know, Clorox wipes before we brought them into the house. I was the one that was overly sanitizing. I was, I mean, we lost friends over COVID because other folks were getting together and I didn't feel comfortable putting my family back together. Uh, when school started, we kept the girls out for the whole first semester and they did virtual school, which will just break you as a, as a person. Anybody who homeschools, anybody who teaches all these kids, I mean, just unbelievable what they're able to do. Here was a place that was closed, but some of our best memories were recreating Disney dishes in the evening. You know, our favorite resort, I'd either look up a uh, you know, the exact um, recipe online, or I'd kind of just figure it out because I love to cook. We bought a little kiddie pool and and would put it out in the driveway and Lacey would play in it while we're listening to Disney music. Disney had these sing-alongs that they brought everyone together and, and releasing movies early on Disney Plus that weren't supposed to come out for a long time. And just, it got us through that, that. And then when the parks reopened and we were able to go back and be in our happy place, it was very surreal and it was it was scary. Because you were, you know, everybody was distanced. We were wearing masks for a really long time. You know, there were sanitizer stations everywhere. It was kind of scary to go, but it was also just incredible to get back to that. Yeah. I mean, I can say just kind of those connections and our family being together during the worst time, probably in our lives that, that we've known so far. And hopefully that's it and doesn't happen again. I mean, Disney was a major factor in, in getting us through that. So that's kind of just another one of those, I think, reasons we're. A little bit crazy about it. When it comes to our relationship with our partners, something we value is fun and adventure. And date nights of just eating dinner, watching a movie, and scrolling our phones just isn't cutting it anymore. So here's our solution. We just found the Meet Cute deck, and it's really given us the motivation to start doing things as a couple again. The Meet Cute deck comes with 50 unique date nights and six different categories like outdoor adventures, arts and crafts, bonding activities, and more. Best part about these ideas is each card could be something we do at home or outside, so it keeps things spontaneous. We just shuffle the deck, grab a card, and that's it. We do that date night, no questions asked. If you want to start having more fun with your partner, check out the Meet Cute deck at meetcutebox.com and use code date nights to get 15% off and free shipping. That's code date nights for 15% off at meetcutebox.com. One of our most popular episodes was with Jesse Golden, the creator of our new favorite and life-changing skincare line, The Golden Secrets. You've probably seen us post about it because we take it everywhere with us, but we wanted to fill you in on exactly what we're using and the results we're seeing with this sustainable, fair trade, and cruelty-free skincare and wellness line. Jesse mentioned that the one thing she'd take to a deserted island is her heal-all oil. So with her incredible-looking skin, I jumped in and bought it right away. 
I'm using the Hilal oil as a moisturizer at the end of my skincare routine, or if I'm in a rush and only use one product after cleansing, it's the Hilal oil. I also use it right before my new gua sha routine. The Golden Secrets has a gua sha tool called the Sorceress Stone Gua Sha Beauty Tool. It's an ancient holistic facial massage tool that enhances your skincare routine by increasing blood flow, circulation, and nutrients to brighten the complexion and tone, and it lifts the facial muscles naturally. Jesse says, this is the one beauty tool hands down that has made the greatest impact on my skin. It has helped retrain the way the patterns of my face, muscles, and skin function. I'm already seeing more definition in my jawline and cheekbones, which is so exciting. Jesse provides tutorials on exactly how to use all of our tools and products. So as a person who's notorious for knowing nothing about skincare, the Golden Secrets has been my favorite discovery. And for me, I've spent years getting back my health. And because of that, I take what I put in and on my body very serious. I can say without a doubt that the Golden Secrets is the only skincare products I will use in the future. I swear by the Hila Oil, the Youth Beauty Face Oil, Coconut Lip Balm, and will soon have every product on my bathroom sink. The Golden Secrets is rooted in nature, ancient wisdom, and organic beauty. Jesse Golden thrives on making skincare and wellness products that benefit everybody. We're thrilled that we have a discount code you can use to save money when you shop the Golden Secrets. Use code GOLDIVY for 10% off today and keep watching us at Gold Ivy Health Co. on all social channels as we continue to share our amazing results with the Golden Secrets skincare line. You can find the link and code in the show notes of this episode. And now back to the show. That's got to be wild to think about it being completely shut down to, and, and your mindset during it of, okay, like, is this safe to go back mm-hmm. to the park? This is our happy place. It probably helped you transition back into like some normalcy. Like it's worth it. Like my mental health, our family needs this place mm-hmm. that we rely on and it's kind of risky to go, but for our mental sanity and what we love to do, it might be worth the risk a little bit to, to ease back into some public places. And one of our favorite things too, is just like we mentioned connections and the relationships is to connect with other guests that are there when we're there. And it's hard not, again, not to be creepy. We might be in line and you hear somebody behind you and they're, you know, talking about their plans for the day. And you're like, Oh, (laughs) I need to turn around and say something to them because I'm going to feel bad if I don't. Are your kids like, dad, don't do it. Don't do it. Dad. Embarrassed as all get out. But you know, we would go back and for those first several months, you were six feet apart from everyone, even if you were waiting for a bus and you had a mask on. And I'll never forget, we were at Animal Kingdom Lodge, which is just one of the resorts that we love. I think it was the point you still had to wear masks on transportation, but if you were outdoors, you no longer had to wear them, but people were still standing kind of far apart. And we somehow struck up a conversation 10 feet away with this mom and her daughter, who was a school teacher. And her mom was like, kind of, you did it. You got through a lot of this. I'm going to take you to Disney because of all that you've been through trying to teach and virtual and and then in person and all this. And we just chatted with them for like 10 minutes and we hadn't gotten to do that in months. And it was just one of those things. Like it's one of my favorite memories that seems so simple, but there there's so much to going to these theme parks than just the rides, the attractions, the characters. There's so many other little details that can make your trip incredible. You know, whether that's just a conversation with a stranger and hearing a little bit of their story to going on, you know, the latest and greatest ride. There's just, there's something new every time you go. And and there can always be some of those kind of like magic moments every time you go. Mm -hmm. How do you keep it magic? Because it's a passion for you, but it's become work. It's hard. It's, I mean, it's a balance. It's hard to explain to people because it's something that's really cool to do. I don't know if you sat down and asked the same question, not that I'm comparing ourselves to any sort of celebrity profession. But if you went and asked like Taylor Swift, how do you go out and perform every single night? Like that's, that's still a job to her. That's work. It's a really cool one. And that's kind of how we feel. So there's, I think it's part of just, we're just lucky and we're thankful and we're just so blessed that we get to do this. We try every time to do something new. Yeah. We've been what, eight years, probably 30 times a year, at least, you know, that's a lot of trips. Wow. It can be hard to find something new, but you can find something so minimal. I remember this, Kaylin probably would have been, she's 15 now. She probably was about 10 years old. Back at that time, we made a point that every single trip we had to have a Disney first and it could be anything. 
So this one particular trip, uh, we had ridden Rock and Roller Coaster at Hollywood Studios several times. Oh, that's a good one. But we're walking up, and it's just Kaylin and I, because Lacey was younger, didn't want to do the roller coasters. Kaylin was like, I want our Disney first to be riding in the front row of Rock and Roller Coaster. We've never done that. So we asked the cast member, can we wait? Can we do front row? They say, of course, step aside. And we go and we ride front row. And that was our Disney first, something we had never done. You know, even this past week for my birthday, uh, we went to Wilderness Lodge where we've been several times, but we did their club level access. So you get food and drink and your own little private area and snacks and all. And, you know, that was something we'd never done in eight years. And so we try to always keep things new. One thing that helps with that is looking at it as work and content. So we might find a favorite restaurant, a, a favorite show, or whatever it may be, a snack, a drink. Sometimes it stinks because you can't really go back and do it again. You go, well, we were just there last month. We're not going to go back. That's just repeating content way too soon. But then it forces us to go and say, well, we've never actually eaten at this restaurant or we haven't eaten here in three years. Let's go get more content there. So it pushes us a lot of times to do things that maybe we wouldn't do. There, there could be a lot worse things. Rondo, Rondo will have clients and they'll say like, what are you doing this weekend? And she'll be like, well, we're going to Disney. And they'll be like, oh, that must be nice. Like, yeah, it is. But when we're there, you know, these are the things we do. I haven't eaten a, a piping hot meal at Disney in six years because the camera eats first. <laughs> you got to take video. You got to do photos. You got to, you know, and it's something we're still learning where I can say, all right, I'll remember what we ate. So let me just snap pictures real quick and then put my phone back in my pocket. I can worry about that content later, whether when I get home, when we're winding down this evening. So it's finding that balance too, because, and I think that's part of the reason we haven't burnt out. I think that the combination of going so often and the combination of doing, you know, work while you're there could have a really bad balance if you don't do it correctly. And I think we've finally found a way where it works. Like we do, we do room tours for our private Patreon group. And we know now, like when we show up before we start unpacking and, and just tear this place apart, cause we're very, very messy. <laughs> let's go ahead and do the room tour. Let's get it done. And then we can relax and enjoy the room the rest of the weekend. It used to be, we're like, nah, we just got here. Let's unpack, let's settle in. And then Sunday morning comes around and it's like, I don't, I don't, I want to go home. Mm -hmm. I don't want to interact with people online. I don't want to do a room tour. And so it's learning those kind of different lessons every time on how you do that, that balance. And, you know, even prior when we were doing just this and I was working 40 hours a week in a cubicle up in Jacksonville, we still always tried to find that work play balance, which I just think is one of the most important things in the world. It, it's the whole reason I left the corporate world and started my own business. And Andrea, I know you will be able to attest to this more so here now, but driving 30 minutes to and from work every day, I was miserable. I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing this for the rest of my life. I'm not going to wait and play when I'm 65 and retired, I'm going to play now and I can work at the same time. So what does that take? I mean, something else Alan always says, and by the way, I do all Alan's social media, media and a lot of video and podcasts. So he's just ingrained in my brain. So it's hard <laughs> not to repeat things, but you know, find something you love, find something you're good at and wherever those intersect, that's what you should do. And so that's what I did. That's awesome. And that's what we hope everybody else does too. Like we want to inspire people to think about what it is that you love. And, you know, I keep thinking too, like I'm thinking of your intersection of work and play and the escape piece of it. And I keep thinking like, why wouldn't you guys both just work there? Why wouldn't Rhonda just be a hairstylist in a resort at a spa on the property and you could work in the avatar room staring <laughs> at the people all day long. I don't know how, fi how much financially that would make sense for your family, but have you two ever thought about actually working on the property? So you're always just there. Yeah. And I mean, really right now, and I think this goes for a lot of, of people with kids, especially at the ages there are now, like if that's something, if the girls had been two and five, when we really started this, it might be different, but they're so ingrained now with the community and their friends and school that it'd be hard to uproot them from that. Second, there's there's there can be a fine line, and I don't know it exactly, of just say working for Disney and also doing a podcast. So that that's another one where it's like we love we love doing this, and I wouldn't want to potentially give up the podcast and the community. Because just say we're actually working 
for Disney. Now, it's something we thought about. You know, we're two entrepreneurs. We're both basically contract workers in a sense. So retirement isn't really something that we're good at. <laughs> you know, I mean, it isn't just automatic. I don't, we, we might be doing this when we're 75 because that's our retirement plan. And if it turns out that that ends up being, you know, moving right near Disney and, and maybe becoming a cast member kind of as our retirement plan, that's something we've definitely thought of. But at the same time, and we've done well with this podcast, I'm very, very happy with what we've done and where we are and, and how much it's grown. Uh, it's it's incredible. But I think to get to a next level that we'd really like to be at with it, we have to be able to be in the parks every day. And that's a hard line right now of going, all right, you know, if, if Lacey stays living with us till she's 20, you know, gets out of high school and, and sticks around for a year or two, we still got seven years until we could even possibly think of something like that. Mm -hmm. So we'll see when it comes to that. But for now, you know, we're just trying to do the best to continue to grow. We've brought on kind of a team now. So we have some other people that are that are working with us, uh, helping with things like website and blogs and articles and, and the travel portion of it. So we're finally starting to see where hopefully we can really build like a team that it becomes seem more of a business than just, you know, Ron and I sitting down twice a week for an hour talking Disney we're starting to try and fill in all the other pieces that go behind it and kind of see where that takes us next. That's awesome. I think it's so fascinating. Just the things that you know about Disney that the average human doesn't. Mm -hmm. I want to know some stories of maybe just, I don't know, maybe something that the average human wouldn't know about Disney. Ooh. I'm trying to think of some good ones. I mean, there's so many, there's just so many tips and, and tricks around going and understanding uh, whatever you think about there's, there's lots of very interesting stories that if you're not in the Disney community, you wouldn't know. For example, yesterday, half of magic kingdom down was shut down for half the day because there was a bear in the what? park, a bear, a black bear, which there are in Florida, but nobody ever sees them or talks what? about them was in the park. They had to shut down the entire left side of the park because a bear was on Tom Sawyer Island. No way. I'm not kidding. That's like where all the bear stuff is like the, they were just coming home. Yeah, Country Bear Jamboree. So I don't know if he was trying to check it out, if he's got relatives there. I don't know. But oh my gosh, there's lots of myths. There's lots of myths that say that people have um, spread their loved ones' ashes on like Haunted Mansion. Oh, I have never gotten any sort of confirmed report that that's happened. Is that in your will? Uh, they can, they'll just spread me on uh, Avatar over there somewhere flying on a banshee. But yeah, there's lots of interesting little things like that. But you know, one of the things that we tell people a lot too is like, never, never think that your kids are too young to take them for their first time. Uh, we, we took Kaylin, both Kaylin and Lacey actually for their first times when they were 18 months. And when we took Kaylin, I was the one that was like, where my parents were coming, Rhonda's parents were coming. It was Rhonda's uh, birthday. It was her 30th birthday that year. And it was, uh, Kaylin. Yeah, it was 18 months. And I was just like, what a waste of money. We're going to spend all this money for an 18 month year old who is not going to know what's going on and is not going to remember anything. It was one of the best trips ever. Like I have a memory of Kalen meeting Mickey Mouse for the first time and running up and kissing him on the nose. And I, like Rhonda's crying and my mom's crying and Rhonda's mom is crying. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even believe this. Like take the kids when they're, when they're that age, because that trip's not for them. That trip's for you as a parent, because you're never going to see from that like 18 months old up until the girls were probably maybe six, seven is, is then gone. Like once, and they're not going to be the same. A 13 year old is a lot different to take to Disney than a five year old. And not that anyone is better than the other or worse than the other. It's just different. So like, just, just go and enjoy it and, and take your kids at that young age and, you know, make those memories. And it's easier to make them now than it was back then with social media. And you got a camera in your pocket, you know, every second. And mm -hmm. you're going to be on your phone a lot at Disney. Take the time to put it away. Just be there. And yeah, it's just going to make your trip. It's going to make it so much better. I, I wake up every morning and it's the only reason really I do things on Facebook is for the memories each year. Mm -hmm. And it's the first thing I wake up every morning is I go to Facebook and I go to my memories. And lucky for us, a lot of those are Disney. And when I bring up that photo of Kaylin at five years old, head to toe in Tinkerbell, and Rhonda got up at five in the morning and did her hair and did her makeup 
and she was excited for that. You just don't get that back. But I get to look at that every single year on that date and just be like, wow, that was that was amazing. And then now let's go create new memories as, you know, 13 year old and a 15 year old. It's it's different, but we're still we're still doing that and we're still able to do that. So really, really study everything that you can uh, about the trip and things like Genie Plus and Lightning Lane and dining reservations and, you know, what time shows are, what time parades are. Those are the things I know they're not really like behind the scenes, but you will have a major leg up on your vacation if you can put in some time to understand exactly what it's like to go on a Disney vacation. What I love too, it's like thinking of these past memories and getting these good feelings and then a mix of thinking of these, like having something to look forward Mm -hmm. to, to create these future memories, you know, it sounds like it's a lot about like creating memories. And it's so important because we, these snapshots, they really, they create that warm feeling inside us. And it's I really just this word connection keeps coming to mind. But something I was thinking about when you were talking about taking pictures at the park is this is going to date me. But back in like 2002 ish, I was at, I, where is the rock and roll ride? At Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios. I was at Hollywood Studios. I'm on the rock and roll ride. It was so much fun. It was there for a band trip. Also Awesome. <laughs> I miss my alto sax. No, I don't. But anyways, so I'm coming out of this ride and I'm like, wait a second. Is that Travis Barker? I'm holding my Polaroid disposable camera in my hand. And I go, Travis? And he turns, he's like, yeah, what's up? He was walking to go into that area because they have like a bunch of drumsticks and I think he was going to sign some for people. And I was like, oh my God can I take a picture with you? And my friends were like, what is she doing? What is she doing? What is she doing? And he's like, yeah, totally. I was like holding the charge. Cause you have to like charge it on the front so that the flash will work on it. And I was like handing it to my friend. He goes, Oh no, 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 no. Take it like this. It's called a selfie. I'd never heard of this before. I never heard of the word selfie. He takes my camera and takes it like this for us to take a picture together. But I swear when he took it, it was way too much on me. And so you don't know because you can't see the picture once it's taken. Oh, until... this is why they came out front facing cameras. So then I had to I had to get from Florida back to Wisconsin via bus, get to Walmart, give him my camera. I'm like, please, because sometimes they don't turn out. Yeah. Please, this camera's this what's on here is very important to me. And it turns out the picture turned out just fine. Oh, he was in it. He was in it. Me and oh. him, biggest smile on my face, Travis Barker. You are a gem. You're a very nice man. And so I'm curious for you. Have you seen like celebrities? Have you met any celebrities? Like any celebrity sightings or like interactions with all the times that you've been there? Yeah. So a couple. Um, these weren't like interactions because you you just go to it. They do every year. It's called a candlelight processional during the holiday season, where it's like the retelling kind of of Jesus and the story, and but not overly religious. Like it's actually something that I think can be enjoyable for everyone. Re- regardless of your religion background, religious background, and they have celebrity hosts. I'm a huge Neil Patrick Harris fan. I just think he is incredible. And he is a giant Disney fan, like crazy, crazy Disney fan. And so he's hosting it. Rhonda and I decided, I was like, look, if we're going to go see Neil Patrick Harris, we're going to do a dining package. So you're guaranteed seating uh, in Epcot here. And I was like, if we're going to do this, then we got to go out. Like it's Neil Patrick Harris. I'm going to suit up. So I wear head to toe full suit. Rhonda buys this like beautiful dress that matches. We've got like green tones because it's kind of Christmassy. First of all, walking through the park because you're walking through Epcot, everybody's looking like we're someone and we're not. (laughs) And then we go to dinner and we go to see Neil Patrick Harris and he's just hilarious and it's great. And we're done. And Rhonda goes at one point, she goes, I swear that he looked over at you at one point and like saw you in your suit and everything. And I was like, okay. So earlier, before we had gone, I had tweeted out a picture of us and was like, hey, if you're going to go see Neil Patrick Harris, you got to suit up, go back to the room. And he responds and he's like, it's hard to miss a sharp dressed man or something like that. So it was just super cool. Uh, This last year, we went and saw Josh Gad do the candlelight processional, which was just amazing. He's the voice of Olaf, right? Yes. So it was it was so good. So we were there one time and Gary Sinise does something for, uh, I can't remember the exact name of his charity, but it's for military families. And he, he sends them all to Disney for a week every year. I think it's in like November. And he was also there doing the candlelight processional at that time. 
So we were actually hanging out at Wilderness Lodge with some friends sitting out by the water. And I look over and it's Gary Sinise. Who's Gary Sinise? Oh, he's been in, he's been in so many things in like Apollo 13 and a big, he's a big actor. You will recognize him if you see him. Okay. Never heard of him. Look him up. I guarantee. Now I have to look up some of the movies you'd probably recognize him from. But so he's there with a Disney cast member, like a VIP guide. And I was like, I'm going to go say something. And so I got up and I started to walk over and about 10 feet from him. And he didn't see me, but the, the cast member turned around and just kind of gave me a little wave like, no, we're, we're not we're not coming up and talking to Gary right now. I was like, OK. And then uh, the one other time uh, and you, you won't know who this is probably, but there's a Disney Channel movie uh, called Teen Beach Movie. They make two of them. And it's just it's very campy. It's kind of like it's silly, but our family loves it. We love the soundtrack. And one of the actors in it, Garrett Clayton. We're in Hollywood studios and I'm walking by and I look over and I'm like, that's Garrett Clayton. Like, we got to go say something. And I think he actually he was there with his husband. I think he had just gotten married like the week before. So I don't know if this was actually their honeymoon or what. But yeah, we went up. It was me, Rhonda, Caitlin was with us and another friend. And he was just so nice and generous. Like we said, we're big fans of Teen Beach Movie. And he was just taken aback like, really? That That's amazing because he does a lot of other stuff now. And so, yeah, it was really cool. There's. John Stamos will be there a lot. I would love to run into John Stamos. And one of these times, yeah, I'm I'm hopefully running into Neil Patrick Harris because mm. we'll we try and go see him every single year at the Candlelight Processional. And it's another one of those things, like those memories. Mm-hmm. Every year that we go see him, we get dressed up. This last time, um, so Disney bounding, you're not allowed to wear costumes as an adult, but you can it's called Disney bounding, where you would wear like tones of just say a a, a character. So we did a Disney bound as Olaf and um, Anna. So I had uh, white dress pants. I had a white vest. I wore long sleeve brown shirt. And then I had like orange accent, like bow tie. And Rhonda kind of, again, Disney bounded as Anna and had her little satchel and, you know, just the colors and all. And just those types of things that I think a lot of people don't think about, like doing at Disney and just kind of take it an extra step and an extra level just to create more of those memories. So. Mm -hmm. I love it. It makes me so excited for when I have a family someday Mm -hmm. to go to Disney and to have someone like Jeremy that can set me up for success. Mm -hmm. And so, Jeremy, tell the people where they can find you, where they can find Main Street Magic, all of the things. Yeah, so you can go to mainstmagic.com. You can check out the podcast there. You can check out um, our shirts. We do a shirt that says, Be Nice to Cast Members on it because we heard horror stories and that's just the way, you know, we can help show our support. Lots of people love wearing those in the parks and then main ST magic pretty much on any of the socials. That's uh, our Facebook uh, community. That's Twitter. That's Instagram. Uh, You can find us out there. And you also have a charity that you wanted to mention as well. When we first started all this, we always wanted to make sure that we could give back to the community somehow. And two years ago, we felt that we were big enough to do so. So we partnered with Give Kids the World Village, which helps um, children with sickness come down to Central Florida for a week. And they have their own village, literally, that the family stays in. And then they can decide what they want to do. Do they want to do Disney? Do they want to do Universal, SeaWorld, all of them? And we visited it last year, the actual village. And it is just heartwarming and heartbreaking. It's one of the the coolest things we've ever gotten to do. So we came up with a yearly charity. We're going to be going into the third one uh, in April of 2024, and it's called the Main Street 16 Challenge. And it is four rides in each of the four parks in one day. So 16 rides total as you're hopping from park to park. And we raise money all throughout. We do some auctions and, and a trivia night the night before and things like that. But you can find out about that at MainStreet16.com. Uh, we have the date set. We've got the resort set with room blocks. We're still working on... Uh, updating the donation link and some of the other things that are going to be coming out. But you can either go there or you can just go to uh, Give Kids the World Village, their website, and you can make donations there as well. But it's such an incredible charity. And just to finally be in a position that we can give back. Uh, The past two years, us and our team have raised over $21,000 for them. Uh, The average cost of a wish trip is $7,000. So that's about three trips for families. And so we're hoping we can just continue grow it even more this year and maybe do another three families or something like that. That's awesome. I've had such a great experience, just the heaviness of having Mm -hmm. a a child that's ill and then being able to give them an experience like that. Oh, that's amazing. Well, awesome. And as you know, Jeremy, 
We always end our episodes <laughs> <laughs> with a few segments. And one of them is your three gold stars. So what would you like to share with our listeners? Book the trip or just do it. We'll just go Nike. <laughs> it doesn't even have to be a trip. There's a side hustle you want to do. Just do it. Just start it. You want to start a podcast about something you love? Just do it. You know, trips coming up, book the trip, go and just have fun. Cause you're, you're not going to get it back. Your, your kid's five and you think, ah, we'll take them when they're eight. It's going to be a lot different. Take them when they're five, go ahead and, and whatever it takes, you know, figure out ways to make it happen. And, and hopefully we can help you save some money in doing so build these relationships and connections in everything you do. It could be because you like going to Disney parks. It could be in your work environment. It can be, you know, the, the people across the street. We have such a, a wonderful relationship with our friends across the street that are like family now. Without these relationships that we've been able to build, I don't know where we'd be mentally, financially, just in our lives would be so very different if we didn't just build these relationships. And then when you are building any of this, I mean, my third one would be that it, it takes time. If you want to build a business around something that you love, it does not happen overnight. It does not happen in a year, two, three, four sometimes. You know, we're six years in and we're still working hard to build this and it takes time. I do like podcast consultations with some folks. And the first thing I tell them is it takes time. Even a year in, you you know, you may not be where you want to be. That's okay. Just keep at it. Keep chugging along and and great things will come as long as you enjoy it. I also feel like you're so humble because your podcast has how many downloads total? On this episode that came out today, I think we're going to hit 2 million. Okay. <laughs> so just something to think about. Like that is a lot of hard work, like you're uh -huh. saying, and time. But I just feel like we haven't even hit like this podcast is wildly successful because people are sharing it and sharing it and sharing it. It's very useful and not only useful and practical for like, yes, tips around the park and restaurants and stuff, but having Rhonda on it too, it creates this like warmth mm -hmm. and humor and like you poke fun at each other a little bit. She always giggles and snorts and it's hilarious. <laughs> I just feel like you two talking about these memories on your birthdays or anniversaries or the friends you meet there, it creates this like really personable feeling. Like it's not just like tips and tricks at Disney. Like there's mm -hmm. so much more to it that it's, it's sometimes almost like a sitcom. Like I know I'm going to laugh. I might even shed a tear because Jeremy's very sentimental with his girls. And so I just wanted to add that this is like hugely popular and successful podcast. And Jeremy is just a very humble being here. That's like not really pumping his own tires. Well, thank you. And, and, and part of that is that we're just, we're ourselves, like be yourself in it. The conversations that we have doing the podcast are the same conversations that we have on the drive home when we're talking about that weekend and whatever. So it's just, it's very authentic. This is who Rhonda and I are. We're not trying to put on some show or be somebody different. We're just like, let's just be authentically ourselves and hope that people gravitate to it. Cause it is kind of like, it is almost like a reality radio show in a sense. <laughs> yes. It's just, it's our lives yeah. and That's a good way of putting hopefully it. people enjoy it. A reality <laughs> Disney podcast. Well, and it speaks yes. to when you're authentically you and following your passion, you're magnetic. Mm -hmm. People feel that energy and they're drawn to you and, oh, this is fun and this is play and don't take yourself so serious. Make those memories. Mm -hmm which is amazing. Okay. Three more questions, Jeremy. Rapid fire. Unleashing Ivy. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. You can only do one thing. This is your final <gasps> Disney wish. Oh God. What is it? Would it have to just like a certain maybe attraction or ride or just something in, in general? Yeah. You can only do one Disney related like, thing. How about he has the day to do like three things? Nope. One thing? That can be your question. Oh. <laughs> well, like, so he's going to one ride, one or ride, one, one restaurant, one parade, oh. something that you just want to experience for one final time, not to be morbid, oh, but God. this is really important to you. So I want, I want the people to know myself included. Yeah. Well, oddly enough, because we don't, we don't do it very often is the festival of fantasy parade in magic kingdom. Mm. What is that? All right. How do I get all, all the Disney in a 30 minute period? Then you go to the festival of fantasy parade. Okay. It's going to be all the main characters. The floats are amazing. The music is incredible. There's nothing like standing on Main Street with a bunch of other people, you know, watching this. When when we went last Christmas, we we took the girls. So they've not been pass holders for over two years now. We just we, honestly, we burnt them out. They were like, 
we got to go to Disney again. That sounds awful. <laughs> and that's how spoiled they were. So I said, for Christmas, we're going to Disney. We're going to be there on Christmas day. You girls are going to go. You're going to have a good time. And we saw the parade. And for the first time in forever, I looked over and I saw them in all like clapping and smiling and singing at the parade. And I was just like, oh, this, this is it. Like, this is why we're here. And it was incredible. So I think that would definitely be the, the last Disney thing I would do. Do they end with fireworks? At the parade, because the parade's in the afternoon at like three, oh. so it's also uh, deathly hot. So if you go in the summer, it could be the last Disney thing you do. <laughs> <laughs> I love their fireworks show. The light show in Magic Kingdom is like, it is unbelievable. It is so cool. I got to go. You do. <sighs> you do. All right. My question has nothing to do with anything we've talked about so far. Oh, let's hear it. <laughs> so you posted the other day, and I didn't realize this, that you've kind of had a transformation mm -hmm. with your health and your physical well-being recently. I don't know kind of the span of time. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So we started about two years ago. I was at probably the heaviest I've been almost up to, I think it was about 225, 230, which is pretty heavy for me. Uh, Rhonda was kind of feeling it too. We both just, we weren't feeling great. We were going to Disney a lot and eating junk all the time. We were eating junk at home. And so we kind of, our, our neighbors across the street, she had started kind of a modified keto. So a lot of focus on low carb and low calorie, but we weren't really going with a lot of the high fat stuff. So we started finding like mostly keto snacks and carb balanced tortillas and, and just started eating, you know, healthier, more clean. And then we decided, well, we'll allow ourselves when we go to Disney to, you know, have that burger if we want it or we need to report on it. But when we're home, we really need to start eating healthier. Not that this would be any sort of like promotion for health, but we stopped drinking beer and wine. And oddly enough, like our go to if we want to have alcoholic beverages is um, vodka with water, just plain like tap water and a splash of lemon. And that made a huge difference. I mean, calorie wise, you know, when you're thinking of in sugar and, you know, we were drinking a lot of wine, honestly, at the point and all those sugars and, and the headaches the next day and everything. And so we just started getting like super strict about the way that we were eating at home. I, on Monday, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I usually walk uh, the amount of a 10 K uh, every Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday morning. I usually try and get up from my desk at least once an hour. Cause I work from home and I'm staring at a computer all day. And I just take a 10 minute walk right around our little circle of the neighborhood. And so it was a lot of that. And I ended up down at one point, I think to 192 and Rhonda lost about 15 pounds, gone back up a little bit with some of the trips over the summer. Yeah, we, we feel better. Most recently we're taking a, a hard look at how often and the amount that we drink alcohol and we're working really hard on that. We're going this weekend before that we're recording this, we're going down for some new food and wine stuff. And I said to Rhonda, I was like, you know what? We're going to be there Saturday. We've got to give Kids the World event that night. Uh, why don't Saturday we focus on um, reporting and researching non-alcoholic beverages? It's because every time we go to Disney, you're, you know, you're in the World Showcase at Epcot, and at 11 a.m. you're grabbing a drink and stuff. So we're really trying that portion next of kind of our health journey is to really try and taper off the the amount of alcoholic drinking that we do because it gets easy when you're down there all the time and you're around friends all the time and you know magic kingdom is the only place that doesn't readily serve any sort of alcohol you have to get a, at a sit-down restaurant but everywhere else i know people think it's some big family resort but it's plentiful and so that's kind of our next step in trying to just make ourselves healthier and all as we just continually get older and older <laughs> i love that <laughs> have you, for and, you. Uh, Rhonda, experienced any benefits to your mental health with these shifts you know i i have um and, and i'm trying to think of where it came from. So yeah, throughout COVID, as I kind of mentioned, er, mentioned earlier and coming out of it, I was, I was a wreck, very mentally unhealthy. And that's another thing when we talk about work, play and balance is I, I if it weren't for Rhonda, I don't know that I would have continued with the podcast. It was, it was getting hard for me to sit down twice a week and be outgoing and happy. I can't sit on a podcast and be down, you know, or depressed or anything. So it was very much Rhonda would say, we have to record. And I'd be like, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to record. She's like, well, we, we need to. And so as soon as we turn on those mics, it would kick in. I'd be great. In July of 20, let's see, it would have been 2022. I was actually down with friends at Volcano Bay at 
um, Universal Orlando. And we had gone up. There's this really tall uh, slide. It's a family slide. And you got to go up several heights. And I'm not a big fan of heights like that. And, and I never liked being up there. And I was up there. Ron was actually working that day. So just Lacey and I went with our friends and their daughter. And I remember our friend Karen, she just looked at me. She was like, are you good? You look like kind of pale and all. And I was like, I just don't like it up here. I'm ready to get on the, the ride. So you get in a family raft. There's like five of us. And it goes up this big hill and comes back down. And I was like, I wonder if it'd be more exciting if I close my eyes. <sighs> So I close my eyes and it's terrifying. <laughs> and we get back down to the seat and um, they're both nurses. And I, I looked at Karen and I think it was Ashley there. And I just looked at her and I said, um, I'm pretty sure I'm having a panic attack. And I'd never had one in my life, but my heart started racing. I was getting dizzy. I was sweating. I couldn't sh stop shaking. I'm like trembling. It's a hundred degrees outside. That's not helping. And for the next hour, I'm contemplating with them like do i need to go somewhere am i having a heart attack like this something is really really wrong they knew what a panic attack and the signs and everything i was experienced all i wanted to do was call people that were close to me i called ron because i mean literally at that point in your life you don't know what's happening i mean i'm thinking yeah is this the end i should have done festival of fantasy parade <laughs> as my last disney thing and i didn't so i did this damn water slide <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did this water slide and said don't close your eyes on it and so yeah i called Rhonda. i called my dad i called my brother i, I called some of my best friends you thought you were dying. Yeah, I really did. Oh. And I just needed to calm down. And it took, I, we had to leave. I was just like, and then we got a two hour ride home. And I just, I talked the whole way home. Like I was just telling them stories and stuff about, you know, my childhood and cool things I've done in Disney. And we got home and it was several hours that I felt calm, but it was weird because since then it felt like a reset that I just needed somebody to, to turn off the switch in my brain and what I was going through with with some depression and mental things and flip it back on and let's start over. And so in over the past year, yeah, I've come a long way. And I think a lot of that I'm sure has done to the exercise. Like, you know, I, I was telling you guys before that I don't listen to a lot of podcasts anymore. You know, my walks in those mornings are just kind of like me time. I just get to chat with myself. I get to talk about what happened this past week, what's coming up this next week, what's on my to-do list. You know, I get to just plan like I like to plan ahead the next couple weekends and go, well, we're going here and here. So, you know, and that kind of just helps with everything. I've come a long way in that past year or so and feel, yeah, much, much better now. And I think it's been a combination of all of that. And certainly I think, you know, being in Disney, as we said, is some of that release. So it helps a whole lot to, to get down there and kind of, yeah, go on that ride where I don't have to worry about what's happening at home or and it's a hard thing because I look at how fortunate we are and I feel bad sometimes that I feel down. Like so you just can't help that. Mm -hmm. right. So I, I can tell you honestly, and I think I mentioned this to you guys before, like the guests that you have on, it's like, that's even helped because you get to look at these other stories and journeys that people go to. And it puts a lot of your own life into perspective, no matter what's going on in your own life. There's always people that are going through so, so much more. And so some of those mornings I'll walk and I'll almost just laugh like, this is great. Like I'm, I'm outside, I'm in Florida, I'm going for a walk. Yeah, it sucks. I got to go home and pay all my bills or I've got a project that needs to be done, but this is really cool and I'm very, very fortunate. And I think that kind of mindset has helped me come like a really, really long way in the past year or so. Mm -hmm. I love that. I hope you're proud of yourself. That's no small feat. And Know that we'll give you some good perspective come December when we're recording and we're letting you know the temperature here and you're in beautiful Florida. <laughs> well, I think that's tough though, too, that it's like sometimes your life, it you feel more depressed that you're not happy with how good your life is. Like that sometimes your mental health, like the shoulds. You, yeah. It's like sometimes you just don't feel like how you feel doesn't match your surroundings. And I say, I think sometimes that makes it even worse. You're like, why can't I just be happy? You know, and your mental health is everything. And I think that's cool that you had that perspective too, with the, the panic attack of knowing like, who are my people mm -hmm. that I call to calm me down? Like those are your people. Like, mm -hmm. Hey, I know my life is great. We all know my life is great, but like I'm off, something's off. And I just, I need someone to listen right now that I know loves me and it's just important, like mental health crises, they, they can hit anybody. Mm -hmm. Like nobody is immune to having what's going on here, not match what's out here. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you know who your people are and we're your people too, Jeremy. You are. I will. I will. Hopefully I won't have it next time, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
we'll, we'll certainly we'll give you give you a call. But but that was neat. Like one of the like me and my brother are pretty close now than we ever were before. A lot has just come out from the work and and you know working together and stuff. But yeah, he was like the I think the third person I called that I wouldn't have you know if you had told me ahead of time write down a list of the people you would call in what order. I don't know that he would have been third. And the fact that I called him and he answered right away was just like, wow, this really is, you know, that's one of those things you see, you're like, what a support system. Like, I'm very, very lucky. It's one of those things you're very glad you go through certain things just to kind of get to where you are. All right. Last question. If you could go back and tell younger Jeremy one thing, what would you tell him? Start pursuing your passion earlier. Grew up in a family. Both my parents were educators. Alan went to college. It was expected that I go to college, even though it was not for me whatsoever. I wish that back then I would have known that. And again, it was a very different, there weren't entrepreneurs on every corner, you know, over 25 years ago when I graduated from high school. So now if I knew that, I would just say like, start earlier. I, that's what I tell the girls. Uh, Lacey was really into uh, making bracelets. And I was like, we can start an Etsy shop for you. She would go and set up on the corner in our neighborhood a table and she would sell bracelets, you know, at 12 years old. She's not going to probably be a jewelry, you know, <laughs> like millionaire or something, but it was just like, just start now. If I had had the foresight to say, all right, let's start a Disney podcast. As soon as we started loving Disney and going all the time, we'd be two or three years ahead of where we are now. If I had gone way back then and said, you know what? College is not for me. I, I really like design. I like art. I like stuff like that. I'm going to start as soon as I get out of high school and I'm just going to try and start building a business then. And I'm happy where I'm at, but I think of how much further I could be if I had only started earlier. Yeah. I think it's like trusting that your passion can translate into something beautiful Mm business-wise. Like, you know, until you feel like, okay, I've had enough evidence that like I should probably be doing this, then you start, you know? But it's so true that, you know, when you love something, it can be your income Mm -hmm. and it's so cool what you've created. And we're so thankful that we know you and that you took time to chat with us. We know that you've got a million things going on and Disney planning to do, but we're so happy that you're a part of gold Ivy health co too. And we love working with you. We love what you're creating with your family and it's inspiring. So thank you so much for joining us today and being part of our team. Well, thank you. I really, really appreciate you having me on. And yeah, it's been been one of the best things that's happened in the past year is to get to know you all and get to work with you. Uh, it's an absolute joy. And, and that's the other thing, you know, find people that you love to work with. Alan is Alan, but I absolutely love working with him. And it's the same thing with you guys. Like you make it easy. So I really appreciate that. Awesome. Well, and as you know, mm-hmm. we leave our listeners with a piece of gold. Will you please share yours? So mine's surprisingly not Disney related. Um, I am a huge fan of the TV show Scrubs. And so my quote comes from Dr. John Dorian. uh, And it's maybe the best thing to do is stop trying to figure out where you're going and just enjoy where you're at. This is Gold Ivy signing off. Listen to your truth and go chase your gold. We want to thank you and encourage you to celebrate yourself for taking the time to learn and get inspired in your one beautiful life. And if this podcast means something to you, it would mean so much to us if you'd be willing to take 30 seconds to help support our mission to keep bringing you inspiring stories and guests. First, following the podcast is important because it helps you never miss an episode. To do this, just go to the Ivy Unleashed podcast show page on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And then just tap the plus sign in the upper right-hand corner or click on follow. While you're there, if you'd be so kind to give us a five-star rating and review and share your favorite episode with a friend, we'd be so grateful for your support. We are thrilled you're here and are so happy that you're taking time to prioritize your wellness, self-discovery, and growth with us. The Ivy Unleashed podcast is produced in partnership with Jay Gray Podcast Production.